Hi, this is Thomas Massey. This is my fourth video in a series on taking apart a Tesla car battery and using it to power my house after rewiring it. This is Kentucky. The sun has come up and the fog is burning off. The clouds are moving out and it's looking like we're going to get some sun today. If I look here to the west, the skies are pretty clear. I want to show you a new feature that I've added to the software on my crash dash. The crash dash is the dash that shows the state of the Tesla battery that's running our house. This is the crash dash. It's software that I wrote in C programming language and it's running on a Raspberry Pi being displayed on it about an 8 inch screen and I've added a feature since the last video that I put on the internet. What I've got here is a setup that's going to allow me to produce a time-lapse video of the crash dash and that will be helpful in showing how this new feature works. This is a logging feature and what it does is it shows a 24-hour history in real time of the power going into or out of the battery. Green means power is going into the battery and orange or orange red means power is coming out of the battery. So this right here is a log of this. So what you can see there is yesterday we had a very bright day and there was a cloud right in the middle of the day it looks like. The blue line indicates the, the voltage in the battery. So the battery voltage climbed as the sun kept shining. And then at night you see that we used quite a bit of power. And the reason that's a jagged display is because that's the air conditioner. It's a geothermal heat pump, if you will. That, um, the air conditioner kicked on and off throughout the night. And then finally it turned off there at the end of the night. And then these two humps here are what we call the, the coffee blips. That's where the coffee's made and the toaster comes on. So usually every morning right before the sun comes up, you can see uh, increased power usage where we've woken up, kids getting ready for school, uh, mom and dad making coffee, etc. So there you have it. I'm going to let this run all day and we'll see it work in uh, time-lapse photography. Okay, let's watch that again. The sun is coming up, and you can see the screen wash out because the crash dash is in the sunroom. But toward noon, you see that the green dial is way up there. And then as the sun sets, you see the sunlight disappear, and the dial goes into the red because there's no more sun. Okay, I hope you thought that was kind of neat. What I'm going to show you are some logs from previous days' um, performance of the solar system. Now, this first log here, this was a great day. The battery got completely full. In fact, you can see the green starts backing off uh, even before the sun sets because the battery was so full. When that blue line reaches the gray line, the battery's full. Let's take a look at some other ones. Okay, here's another one. This is a good day. The battery started out about 30% and it ended up up there around 90%. You can see there was a little cloud in the middle of the day, but that was about it. Okay, this is a really bad solar day. You can see the sun comes up, but it's hidden by the clouds all day. The battery doesn't get much of a recharge. So the next night, the battery almost goes dead 
but fortunately the sun comes up right before the battery is dead. Here's another degenerate case where the solar panels didn't provide much power, so going into the night the battery was already low, the air conditioner was running, and at a, some point in the middle of the night the generator kicked on. That's what that square green block is. And then um, I got up in the morning probably and turned it off right before the sun was coming up because I knew we would get some sun and the generator didn't need to completely charge the battery. Okay, enough of the bad days. Here are two good days followed by two really good days. You can see on these days the battery reaches uh, full and then has plenty of power to get through the night, even with the air conditioning running. These were taken in the summer. So the reason you've got all these electronics to make this Tesla battery work is to keep all of those 7,100 and some individual cells near the same voltage. And what happens though when you get toward the bottom of the capacity of this battery pack is that the differences in cell voltage become more apparent. And so somewhere around about 38 volts, if you've got two of these Tesla modules in series, you will see a large disparity between the individual cells. That's indicated there on the blue dial to the right, but you can also see the jaggedness of the bar graph there to the left of those green bars. Those are the individual voltages of the subsets within the modules. And all of these electronics are working to monitor that, but also to try and balance that. Just a real quick summary of the evolution of the display for our solar system. This is the Outback display. It shows you the voltage of the battery, how much power is coming from the solar panels, how much power you're using, and it will also help you auto start the generator if the batteries get low. Now this is the display that I developed that shows me the state of the Tesla battery. And this has been on our wall here for oh nine months. And I just got something else pretty exciting started up here. Now I figured out a way using an app called VNC Viewer to actually about that show the um, the display on my phone and this will work anywhere that you can get internet service or phone service so now when I'm in Washington DC I can actually look at the state of my battery it's pretty cool well here I am down at the Big Barn Farm Store, about three miles from the house, and in my pickup truck, and I am able to monitor my Tesla battery inside the house that's running the whole house. So this is a proof of concept. If it works at the Big Barn, it ought to work in the swamp. This might be my final video in the Big Battery Adventure series, so I'm going to leave off where I began, which is Jack Rickard's EVTV YouTube channel. There's just a wealth of information there. Uh, Jack Rickard is one of my heroes. He is the one who provided the magic beans that made the whole project work. He is the one that provides a microcontroller that lets other computers talk to Tesla battery modules. And he's willing to sell it to people and help them find the rest of the parts they need. He, his videos are extremely informative, and uh, I encourage you to go there. And if you want a commercially available version of the Crash Dash, Jack Rickard is working on one that's going to be better than mine. So go check it out.